Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts, or we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For your is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. O Heavenly Father, let them know that this is true history. Let them know that I have no reason to fabricate like most of the people on this platform that call themselves original gangsters. I am not a gangster. I am a man of God. And I know, Heavenly Father, that only you can judge me and you know my heart. In the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died and shed his precious blood. Amen. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. I'm back again with another one. And this is 1982 that I'm talking about. And the title of this is called Great Street Crips Invades Swanhood. Now, let me get to the matter at hand. Great Street OG Ball was assassinated on Avalon and 88th Street near the Avalon Garden Crips Project. Bosco, Eric, Turtle were a few that I knew of. Turtle himself had a fist to cuff with my homeboy named Red Dog, resting in peace. I will get back to that matter in a few seconds or a minute or so. But first, let me go farther on to another incident. And the incident is based on the Great Streets went up to Fremont High to Hubang inside the territory of Swanhood. From my understanding, they rushed some East Coast Crips by accident. Later on, Bonnie Hunters and the Swans had a party on 83rd near Avalon Boulevard. I was there. Also, Tweet was there and Ragtime was there. Now getting back to the subject at hand, dealing with Red Dog and Turtle inside the LA County Jail. Well, from my understanding, they had a good fight. From my understanding, when I came inside the road in 3200 and Red Dog showed me his hands and his hand was all bruised up. Then he pointed out his victim, I guess, his Turtle from 88, Avalon Garden. They had a head up fight, the only because Speedy was there from Backstreet Crips, and he wasn't going to let it be no rat packing. But meanwhile, the Great Streets, wherever they came from, 3,800 on the second floor, I don't know where they came from, but from my understanding, it was Wino from Great Street, and he was mobbing with some old Great Streets. They had a gang of Crips behind him. And they snuck in 3,200 to deal with Red Dog because they heard that him and Turtleway got down. So now they want to flex their muscle on Red Dog and let them know there's the Great Street thing. But anyhow, Speedy wasn't going for the Rat Pack. So Wino and Red Dog had a fist to cuff. And I heard it was a good one. I heard it from Rat and I heard it from Wino. I got two sides of the story. One side from Rat's side and one side from Wino's side. Inside prison, Wino told me about it when I was in Lancaster with him. But I heard that they had a good one, though. Now, as far as Turtle and Rat, I heard Turtle came out on the losing end. And that's the reason why Wino and them came down there to revenge for Turtle. But anyway, getting back to the matter at hand. Uh, Butcher was also there from 8-9 Family. And he had Rat back. Yeah, they even fired on Butcher. One, somebody dope fiend Butcher, and uh, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it like I said before. Psych from Rolling 20 Bloods 
he climbed up the bars from the bottom tier and climbed all the way up to the second tier to make a great escape. You buster, ran off on my homeboys like that. Anyhow, Wino and Rat had a head up fight and it was a good fight from my understanding. Well, the Bonnie Hunters at the party after OG Bone from Gray Street was assassinated, they had a party together. The Bonnie Hunters, the Bonnie Hunters had the shotgun at my homeboy's house, Mr. T on 83rd near McKinley. And the Swans showed up with the with their eight, nine families. Tweet and Ragtime and some old family swan showed up together and we partied together. And yes, everything was cool. Nothing didn't happen that night. It was all good. 81, 82, it was all good. Us chilling with the family swan. Big Tweet and OG Ragtime. They were our associates. It was Michael Smith a.k.a. Mr. T, also his brother, Howard Cosell. It was their house that was between Central and Avalon Boulevard on 83rd. Now, let me get to another matter pertaining to 30 Days again. I'm going to show you this buster who called the popo on me. And then... Later on down the line, he had to face the consequences. Thank God, the masked man on Halloween night didn't murder him. He almost got his head blew off in 1991 behind telling. He always, you know, you have to understand some things people just don't walk around and just talk about it. Some people try to do things about it. And I'm not going to say it was me. I'm not going to say it was he. I'm not going to say it was she. But he know who it was because we did have a conversation about it since I've been out for the last, what, 16 years we discussed the issue at hand. And his hands were shaking like a leaf when he shook my hand because he knew I wasn't going for nothing but a confession. And that's the only way he was going to come back around me is confess his wrongdoing to me face to face. And that's what happened. Face to face, I let the matter go ever since 82 to 91 to 2010 or 11. I think we killed that noise. But anyhow, back to the matter at hand again. He's the guy with the red T-shirt on, hanging out with BJ at the Summer Jam 2002. Getting into it with the 60s. Chucks in them 90s and hoodies and red beans to get your whole hood up. Take me in the cross scene. You know how we roll up. You jotting down soldiers. The max in them roll bus. Come out of the cold cut. And once you say hold up, too late once you fold up. Oh yeah, the Great Street turned it out. I was in prison watching it from my prison cell at the time. You know what I'm saying? I was only had about four more years to go. Or yeah, it's about, I say six more years to go. Because I paroled in 2008. So this happened in 2002. But yeah, uh, the Halloween incident, it's a dead issue now because we did let it go and it's over with. But I still want to speak on it because it's my history. I served time behind eight ball, six years in prison. He went to court and showed the jury the battle wound, not even the battle wound, the scores that he was victimized on. His artery got shot out. And he almost bled to death. They tried to give me attempted murder. But being that he survived, they made it to great bodily harm. ADW, assault with a deadly weapon. And they gave me two for the gun. They gave me two for the assault. And they gave me two for the great bodily harm. And they added up to six years. And I did that through Tracy, through Soliday, and paroled out the hole in San Quentin in 1987. From 1982 to 87, I had to do time for that. You rat. Now I'm getting to another matter at hand. Before the police caught me, you damn right, I went on my mission because I had to clean up a whole lot of dirt that was going on. So I said, let me just 
pony up. <clears throat> Let me just pony up and do my ride. Yes, I had to ride on my pony or whatever horse you want to call it, but I call it a pony up. Okay, now I'm going to deal with Cassidy from 112th neighborhood crib near Lot High. Launched a mission off to deal with him right there on Avalon near Lansing. Across the street was the pool hall. And that's where he hung out at. So one night, some Miller gangsters and some Phyllis Town Power Roots came through the Nickerson Garden. And I was still upset about my little homeboy Tommy getting killed by the Millers. Yes, I blamed all of them for it. And I told him, y'all can't come in my hood unless y'all gonna put on some work. Y'all gonna roll with me? You gonna handle some business? Let's go on 112th and Avalon and get cracking. So they followed me. And I had them on a mission, about three of them, outside bloods that came in my hood and want to hang out like it's a, a place to just hang out in. I guess you can call it PC if you want to, protected custody, because the Carver Parks was, was on one. So I guess they only safe haven was to come into Nickerson Garden. Miller Gangster Moe, also him. He came through there also, you know, Casper from the Millers. He came through also, you know what I'm saying? Everybody wanted to hang out in the projects, even after the death of my homeboy. And I didn't like it, you know what I'm saying? Because don't be using my spot as a, as a safe haven. Hang in your own neighborhood. So if you come in my spot, you got to go on a mission with me because I ain't having it. So anyway, we went towards 112th, down Lansing. And when we got to Avalon, Miller Gangster Moe wasn't there, but his homeboys was there, at least one of them, and one from Village Town was there also. When we got ready to go to the pool hall, I had the same pistol, the 32 long, the eight ball got hit with. So when we get to Avalon, the dude from Fruit Town, not Fruit Town, but from Village Town, gonna tell me, hey man, I can't go, we can't do it, man, because Cassidy is my family member. I said, well, why you didn't tell me that from the beginning, man? So we went on and went to it on another mission. Instead of going across Avalon on 112th, we walked down Avalon all the way to 105th. When we get to 105th, we cross uh, McKinley, and then we get to Wadsworth, and guess what? There was a dice game going on with nothing but Caribs, Front Street Watts, Crip Dogs, and guess what, man? I lit them up. I ain't got no shame in my game. I lit them up. The whole dice game was screaming and hollering and running at the same time. And the Miller Gangster and the Fruit Town Power Rule dude couldn't do nothing because I guess it wasn't nothing to do but just observe how I was handling my business. That's right. Busting on them. That's right. I had to get cracking because I knew I was going to jail somewhere later because A Ball had already told the police, you know. So, hey, I might as well do what I got to do. So I went on and handled my business on that end of town. Next thing you know, I went on another one. You know, I went on another one with, I caught a guy from Carver Park on Imperial in Central. And the cool thing about it, he was wearing the same color, blue T.I. sweatsuit that I was wearing. And he had the audacity. I knew who he was, but I ain't gonna tell you his name, but I knew who he was from Carver Park. So I said to myself, I might well catch him too, because it's early in the morning, around about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I just got through busting on the Front Street Watts. So now I'm finna get one point blank now, you know, and he's on the bus stop, acting like he's finna blend in. I think he probably was going to college, the Southwest. So he, nobody didn't know him but me. So I got all my homegirls sitting on the bus stop, innocent people on the bus stop. So I didn't want to really do it, you know what I'm saying, in front of them, but I didn't have no choice. They didn't know what was finna go down, so I made it go down. So the first thing I did, walked up on him, and I blasted him. I tried to hit him in the neck or the head, but he caught him in the shoulder. And when he screamed like a female, he ran across Imperial towards the gas station, which is Shell gas station. I blasted him again and hit him in his butt. Okay, now he's running across, going towards stops on the other side. So I'm glad he didn't die. But I ain't going to tell you his name. But that was payback for what Tex did to me when I got caught slipping the middle against the hood. Yes, I had a grudge. And a year later, I got get back. Because that's how long I stayed out from the beginning of my time all the way to I shot eight ball one whole year. I got off parole in May 
or, or April, and I went back in May. So, hey, I had to clean my clock and their clock at the same time. And what I mean by my own clock, I had to get them demons out of my head because I was feeling like I was being the victim when they blasted on me in front of Dre Lighthouse. So it was his homeboy that had to pay for it. And I ain't going to tell you his name, but he know who he is. And the only thing funny about it, not funny, but the serious thing about it, I'm glad he didn't die also. But you want me to tell you something? I'm not a killer, but don't push me. Because I will do that if I got to, but I'm not going to catch no case in front of no gang of people broad daylight. And I'm not hoping I didn't catch no case on no Front Street Watch Hood dude. I really do. Because guess what? I know people that you have with you will turn you in quick. If it's your neck or they neck, guess what? It's going to be your neck. Because that's how history is. Huh? The man who don't do nothing and just observing, he will tell on you. Bottom line.